Welcome. This is yoga to combat sitting. I know you've been doing a lot of sitting, so let's get right into it. Come on. Okay, so go ahead and grab a pillow or a yoga blanket if you have it, a towel, something like that. And let's already come to sitting. <laughs> Because, you know, we're supposed to combat that. I'm going to teach you just something very critical for sitting that is going to impact your everyday, not just your yoga practice. And that is what we just did right here. What did we do? I asked you to lift your hips higher than your knees, or at least the same height. Getting out of, if you sit on the floor and you sit a lot, sometimes that lumbar wants to curve back and our, maybe we have tighter hips, not necessarily that that's from sitting, but we might have tighter hips and we might be with knees up like this. This doesn't feel so good and it tends to collapse us at that front body. So if I can give you this awesome trick, if you're in the car, which often has bucket seats, not great for the spine, um, sitting at the kitchen table, wherever you are sitting on the floor, get some height under your sitting bones and then take the flesh of your sitting bones, pull it back a little bit to help you tilt the pelvis very, I'm talking millimeters, a little more forward so that the spine can be a little taller and you might feel a little more open across the front of your hips. So with that in mind, we'll open whatever we put underneath us wider so that we don't tip backwards. And if you don't have a blanket or anything, that's fine too. Bring your feet in front of you. Let's just get some mobility and some blood flow into our spine, our shoulders, our hips. Hands below the knees, roll the shoulders back, inhale. Exhale, round the spine. Inhale, takes us up. Now, if you feel a little off balance with this, that's normal. You might need to take your feet forward more or further back more, depending on how you feel comfortable, where the foot placement is. We're going back and forth. This can also be doing, doing, it can also be done seated if you like, just like so. Opening the heart and then rounding the heart back. And we're delaminating under the shoulder blades. And then rise up. And let's go to an all fours position. So you can slide that padding underneath you if your knees like that. Again, you don't need it, it's not a must. Take the hands below you, and then we're gonna like barrel roll. This is gonna feel awkward, go with it. So pretend that your whole torso is a barrel and you're just rolling it up to one side, down to the other side, up over and around, okay? So getting into more <laughs> joints, obviously, shoulders and hips, and then all those little joints between the spine, let's roll that barrel in the opposite direction. And if you feel kind of wonky and weird, again, normal. <laughs> Mobilizing here. And then one more time around. And we'll press it back into what's called a child's pose. If you're not familiar, Knees can be together or separated. Hips go towards the heels. You might be on your forearms. You can take the arms forward or back. Forehead could come down to maybe a block or a pillow or something like that. If this bothers your knees or if your hips are feeling less mobile, you can roll something. Say you had another blanket or a towel, which I know most of us do, behind you and decrease the angle of the knees and sit back like so. Maybe even coming a little higher up and leaning forward like this. Take a deep breath. Imagine that breath is going into the back body, into the kidney area. And then exhale from there. Put some life into your hands. Root down. Let the muscles start to wake up through the shoulders, the back and the side body. Keep that and then rise up to all fours. Tuck your toes, lift the hips up and back, and take yourself into a downward dog without a big expectation about what that means. So when you get there, just soften the neck and get some length to the back body. If it feels like this is, I don't know what I'm doing, that, that's okay. What we're doing is a small goal, so you're not trying to be perfect here, is elongating through the spine, through the shoulders, and then bending one knee and the other just to give length to the hamstrings because stuff with low back that can happen from sitting a lot can go hand in hand with tight hamstrings. Not that it's necessarily bad to have tight hamstrings. We just want a little more length maybe. Inhale, exhale, lower the knees. 
Take yourself back and move whatever prop you had there. And we're gonna go into a chair pose from here. So you can come into any amount of a little fold with your knees bent, fingertips down. Then think about hinging at the hips. Shift the hips back. So rather than the knees forward and you're rounding here, kind of like in that cat, instead keep more of a neutral curve in your lumbar, shift the hips back. It'll be more of a back bend in the other direction than a rounding. And bring your hands to your knees. Now draw your low belly gently in and up and wake up your inner thighs, your adductors, just a little bit more. So we're gonna wake up maybe in a new way. We'll go in and out of this. Inhale, reach the arms forward and up. Exhale, come back into a chair pose. Maybe you're way high up with the hips, you don't have to go low. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, working the legs, press the palms actively down. And one more time, inhale, reach up and exhale, actively press down. Inhale here, and as you stand, float the arms the rest of the way down. Roll out the shoulders, go wide with the feet, and take a slow circle with your hips. And just sense into, okay, where, does, where do I feel tighter? Where's a little easier to move? And then go the other direction. Again, just giving some space, some breath, some circulation. Let's not overthink it. And then come up to the top of your mat and we'll do a little bit of a chair pose back down to the floor. So inhale, reach your arms out and up. Exhale, bring your hands onto your thighs. Find that chair pose, that shift back of the hips. Let your feet press down. Let the low belly lift and support. Inhale. And then exhale, just start to slide the hands down. You don't have to straighten the legs all the way. Maybe keep a nice bend. Fingertips or palms to the floor. Maybe it's fingertips and there's more bend in the knees. Shift back into a plank pose. And then only hold that plank for a moment and lower your knees. So I'm gonna teach you again something really critical for the back. If you want a little bit more core and trunk strength, you can work um, postures like plank, but not do the full posture. So if you'd rather come with knees down, do that. But the trick is when you put your knees down, not to drop your lumbar spine in towards the floor, which happens a lot. So when you do put the knees down, keep draping the tail more underneath you to get a little more spaciousness through the back body. Okay. So either stay here or in your plank, inhale, and exhale, we're gonna lower all the way down. Again, maybe your knees are down, take your time. When you get to the floor, maybe sway the hips side to side, get rid of over condensing at the lumbar or compression at the glutes if you're holding on there. And we'll come into a sphinx pose, lovely for the back to do back bends, but they don't have to be these giant Cirque du Soleil back bends to be impactful because how often are we in this shape during our days? Not very often. So stay here or take this further forward to decrease the amount of angle up in your spine and just breathe. So we're gonna activate the parasympathetic nervous system so that there's not fight in the body fighting against the back bend, okay? So we wanna slow down a little bit and just let the shape enter the body and marinate there a little bit more. Roll the shoulders back, slightly lift the sternum. Think about the sternum coming forward rather than up. Tops of the feet are down. I like to take my feet wider than my hips to make that feel a little more comfortable. Inhale and exhale. Come on down and go back into that sway of the hips, maybe the sway of the ankles. If you've been at a desk all day, driving, whatever it is, we need to get some movement and just loosen things up. Bring the hands alongside of the chest, elbows roll back, shoulder blades onto the back, getting nice and strong through that shoulder girdle. Tuck the toes under, press your knees down. Think about tucking that tail, which I don't use that term often unless I really want you to protect that lumbar, especially when you're on your belly, and then press up to an all fours position and back to either your child's pose from before, maybe with a blanket, or a downward facing dog where you're not trying to have 10 mile long hamstrings in one day. <laughs> we, we wouldn't want that. We wouldn't walk very well if that were the, the case. Okay, from here, look to the top of your mat and just 
take any amount of steps there. For those of you who hop or you wanna take one step, that's just fine. We wanna make sure in our transitions, we're caring for the lumbar. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to the heart, and then shake that out. So I've been focused from the beginning to now mostly on the lumbar. And now we're gonna go a little bit more into the chest and opening the shoulders. Cause when we're sitting, a lot of times we're doing work in front of us. So roll the shoulders back and down, and then just start to let the arms grow into that movement bigger and bigger. So it should feel like work, but also space. Going into that external rotation, taking it back. And then from here, shake the arms out and send the head around in a circle. So did we overly work the jaw when we were sitting? Did we work the shoulders and the neck too much, too much maybe the trapezius? Let that go. And then one vertebra at a time, let the head come all the way back up and sigh it out, shake that out. And just do a little side to side here, bending one knee and the other, just checking in with what's going on with the hips, hands might be at the waist. Now shift over, pick a side, any side, shift over, breathe here. And then guess what? The other way and breathe there. Working into those legs, getting more of that blood flow. We're gonna make a little change. Turn your toes now out roughly 45 degrees and we'll take the hips down more into a sumo squat or a goddess squat. If you have a tendency to really roll in, take your feet a little closer and then play with the angle your toes are out or in. Make sure your knees tracking over your second toe. Breathe here and allow some spaciousness to come to the groin and some work in the legs. If you want more work, the arms are gonna come in, up into a cactus or all the way up, wherever that feels good for you if you wanna keep opening the heart. Press down into the floor. Inhale, come all the way up, reach up. Exhale, turn your heels back, toes forward, and bring your elbows back, working the upper paraspinal muscles. Inhale, reach. Exhale, open the heart, elbows draw back, working the back body and the side body. Last one, inhale, reach up. Exhale, do that again or bring the legs into it this time back into that sumo or goddess squat. Breathing. And then float the arms down, shake out the shoulders and let the arms and the legs come all the way straight, arms reaching up, toes draw back and then we'll fold. So earlier we folded with the knees bent, feet closer together. Now we're gonna fold less deep and with wider feet. So maybe you're in a half fold, maybe you have blocks or a chair underneath you. Knees might be bent a lot to make this accessible. Again, if you've been a little sedentary and you haven't been doing a lot of movement, these things are gonna take time for the body to acclimate to. It's totally normal. Root into the floor. Bring your hands to your waist or even onto the thighs for some help and come all the way up to your standing position. If you have any issues with the low back on that, you need to take your feet closer together and really get support in the transition all the way up. Coming to the top of the mat and we're gonna do a march. So <clears throat> we're going, right, for increased heart rate and more of that circulation because generally when we're seated, things start to pull and slow down, okay? So you can stay with this or you can add a little hop. You don't have to do high knees all the way up to your forehead. You can just add a little hop. If that's not working, let's go back to the march, okay? Five, four, three, two, and one. Shake that out. Root the floor, inhale, reach up. Bend the knees any amount, exhale, fold. Come back into the plank of your choice, whether that's knees down, supporting the lumbar, lifting at the organs here and support, or into a fuller plank variation. The main thing we wanna make sure of is we are not collapsed here, okay? That won't do us any good if we've been seated a whole day and then we do things for our low back that aren't nice. Child's pose, everybody. Roll those wrists around, 
maybe sway it out a little bit, whatever feels really nice. So bring your legs forward and just give them a little shake out. Let's roll around the joints that maybe we've neglected today, ankles, toes, wrists, fingers, and then back into that neck, whatever feels right. Take that blanket again, if it feels better on your tailbone to have that, or towel. And we'll go back to where we started, which was here, near the beginning of class. Okay, so rolling the shoulders back again. So think about this as a seated bit of a back bend and lift your sternum up, working the back in a way that we're probably not really used to. And then you can stay with this or lean back a little bit. You can take your hands behind your legs and maybe lean into a boat pose. What we're looking for today is not rounding, but lifting. So even against gravity, having that nice working set of paraspinal muscles, shoulders roll back and heart is open. Three, keep breathing, two, and one. Cross one leg in front of the other. You might go for more height here under your sitting bones for these stretches, really beautiful stretches. It's a lot more accessible with the height under the sitting bones. So one leg is in front of the other. Now ask yourself, is this the leg that's normally in front of the other leg? Hmm, does it feel comfortable? This is how you check. Cross your other leg in front. Does that feel super awkward? Okay. I want you to stay with it, go with it. What that means is, if that's the case, you put the habitual leg forward. We have habitual hands, habitual legs, all of that. Which ones that we, we do things in the same direction make the same shape. So I want you to go in the opposite way than you normally do, and that will be tighter and that's normal. And then maybe stay here breathing. You could be nice and tall. Maybe there's a lean forward if there's the flexibility for that. And then you could find any degree of a fold down towards the floor to gain access to the hips and the lumbar. Now, if you get here and you're saying, well, I don't feel anything, then that will mean you need to increase how far the shins are away from the groin and probably leaning a little more forward. If you're super, super open to the hips, which, which most of us who sit all day, we were not, you would take the um, front leg on top rather than in front. So your job here is to breathe. <laughs> it seems simple, but it's not, I realize. So if you are at a point where it's too tough for you to really get some good breathing in, then you need to back off how far you're leaning forward or how far your shins are away from you. Paint your hips with your breath. Just really give back to your body for allowing you to get whatever work you needed to get done, whatever chores, whatever you did, just giving some love and some sweetness to the body for helping you with that. And then inhale, come all the way up. Let's bring the legs forward and get really lackadaisical, lean back, shake it all out. Not a care in the world. And you'll be glad to know that you get to go in your regular habitual way of crossing your legs this time. So that will make your brain <laughs> feel happy. You might start straight up, maybe a little lean, and then following yourself to the depth that no one is pushing you to. So if it, go to the depth that no one is trying to tell you one is better than the other, go to the depth that feels right in your body. You're still breathing and you're getting a good stretch. If you need to go further away or front leg on top, then you can do that as well. And then what's your job? Uh-huh, breathing. Breathing to get out of fight or flight, to let the body know and to get away from any kind of pulling and protecting mode. Um, sometimes when we're in a new stretch, that's what the body does. It goes, wait, 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 we haven't been there. The breath says, okay, I'm actually okay and I'm safe and we can let this stretch become a part of us. and inhale, come all the way up. We didn't stay quite as long on that side because that's our usually our more open side. Bring the legs forward, lean back, shake it out. Come on to the back. We're gonna love on those hamstrings a little bit more because they love to get length after being in a chair all day. Take yourself down, hug one knee in. The other foot is on the ground. Interlace your 
fingers behind the back of the leg or the back of the calf, knee can be bent, maybe the foot, depending on what feels good in the lumbar and the hamstrings, breathing here. You can always get a, t a towel, no, a tie from your bathrobe and use that as a strap around your foot. Breathing here, not a tug of war, and take the lumbar all the way down onto the floor. Breathing here. So there's a lot of talk about sitting in chairs and whether or not that actually shortens your hip flexors. Switch sides, guys. Interlace behind the leg anywhere that feels good. You don't have to go all the way straight and breathe here. Lumbar down. And the truth is, what they found scientifically, is it's not actually shortening them. Um, they might feel tighter over time, but if you're getting up to go to the bathroom and stuff like that intermittently, um, you should be okay. They're not exactly shorter, but they might need a lot more movement and blood flow to feel less stiff. Inhale and exhale. Both knees come in, rock a little side to side. We're gonna open into the groin really nice. Again, if we've been seated for a long time, take the knees wider than the hips and just let them kind of come to where that's most comfortable with the hands onto the kneecaps. You might stay exactly here and just breathe. It's not a pose we are used to making. We don't open the groin very often in our daily lives. And so you don't take, you don't need to do much different to make it impactful. So maybe now you take the shins more parallel to the floor and hold on there, or the ankles or the outside of the feet for happy baby pose. I love to add movement in happy baby pose. It just kind of allows my hips to soften a little bit more. And also I get that kind of massage feeling across my low back and hips a little bit. Come to center, hug that in. Now, option to stay here or lift your head and chest up and draw your organs deeply towards your spine, curling into a ball, active towards the center. And then release that down. Soles of the feet down. If you want to make restorative bridge pose, you'll use a pillow or a block or something that has some height underneath the lumb, excuse me, the sacrum, not the lumbar, not the tailbone, but something nice and low in between the two. So this is a great one. If you've been hanging out in a seat all day to come and take this more restorative posture and breathe here. You can even, if you had a wall behind you, do this at a wall. Okay, and then that's beautiful. This is Viparita Karani, or legs up the wall. Um, it helps uh, so many things, varicose veins, tired legs, helps the lymphatic system, um, nervous system, a lot. So of course the wall would be behind. And then if you want to get more stretch in those hip flexors, if they do feel tight, maybe straighten one leg, press through that heel. You can even reach the arms away and then switch sides, elongating the other leg, press through the heel, reach the arms away. Only if that feels okay in the low back. It's like, how many times can you say low back today or lumbar? A lot. <laughs> and feet down, that's why, and lower your arms. That's why I was kind of only talking about it at the beginning in terms of lumbar because that's what most of my students complain to me about when they've been sitting a long time. And then lift your hips up, remove the prop from underneath you, give another hug in and a rock. For some of us, twists feel really nice. And if you have, um, if you've been seated a lot, you might choose to be lying down so you're closer to the ground for this rather than choosing a seated twist. Keeping the right knee in, crossing the midline, and you could put something underneath there, your hand, a block, a pillow. If it feels okay to keep opening the chest and the pecs a little bit more, like we did when we were taking the elbows to the sides, then go ahead and extend the right arm onto the floor with the palm up. That'll put the right shoulder in external rotation. Breathe here and let the belly soften. Unwind that and take it to the other side. Left knee in, right leg extends, crossing the midline. Something could be under the knee. Left arm might be extended with the palm up. I tend not to look away from my bent knee unless my neck is feeling really good and open. Um, I was rear-ended a few times within like a very short period of, a, of like one or two weeks and um, my neck has never felt quite right from then. So sometimes it's just best to look up and breathe. Come back through center line. 
And then as I mentioned, taking the legs up the wall might be a great way to spend this Shavasana. Um, it's so nice, especially if you've been traveling or on an airplane or something like that, to do that legs up the wall position or come to a lying down position with your legs straight or your knees bent, maybe a bolster underneath the knees or a blanket. And if you wanna come in to seat it and just work on a little bit of a height under the sitting bones again, you can. But for most of us, if you've been sitting all day, I recommend lying down on the floor right now. We're gonna come into the breath and we're gonna do Samavriti. Even inhale, even exhale completely nourishing for the nervous system, bringing you to layers of release and sustenance and health that we sometimes don't really give the breath the credit for, but scientifically it's been shown that if we can do the slow steady inhale, maybe four or five counts, and a slow steady exhale the same length, we will have overall better health. So I invite you to breathe. If you can bring it up to maybe a five and a half second inhale, five and a half second exhale, feel free to do that. Don't be in a hurry. In our lives, we have so many times we're in a hurry. How about not today, not right now? Let your heart be buoyant in your chest. Your lungs are connected to your heart through the pericardium. It's a sling-like structure. So when we increase the volume of our breath, we're actually toning and massaging the heart a little bit more. And it's just a lovely way to think about the lungs taking care of the heart and of course the heart taking care of the lungs. Let the belly be really soft. And find the liquid portion of your body. We are more liquid, we have more fluid in us than not. So think about going with the flow on that internal liquid layer. Reduce your resistance. I invite you to stay here and release even more fully with the support of the earth beneath you. Know that you have my support and I'm so happy that you joined me today. If you got any value from this video or any others, please subscribe, like, leave me a comment. I look forward to making more of these videos for you and for you coming back. Namaste.